Well, this is a story called Clever Manka, a young lass from Ireland. Now, Manka was indeed clever. She was so clever that people knew from miles around that she could solve riddles and, and she could come up with wise sayings and such as that. She lived with her father way out in the country, just the two of them. And one day her father was working in the fields, hoeing and hoeing and digging up the dirt, when his hoe hit something metal. A metal object in the field where he'd grown potatoes and, 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 and other things to eat? That was odd. He pushed the dirt away and there was a golden cup. Oh my, a golden cup, thought he. I'll take it to the king and the king will reward me handsomely. So he went to Manka, who was working at the house, and he gave her the cup and said, Daughter dear, take this cup and clean it and shine it like the sun. I'll give it to the king and the king will reward me handsomely. She looked at the cup and she said, Father, if you give the king this cup, the king <laughs> may not reward you the way you hope. Oh, nonsense, child. Uh, clean it up as I asked. So, okay, father, she said. And so she cleaned and polished the cup, the golden cup. He went to the king, her father did, gave it to the king. The king looked and said, my, it's a wonderful golden cup. And where is the saucer in which the cup was intended to sit? <laughs> well, I haven't a saucer. All I have is the cup, your highness. Very well, if you haven't the saucer, you won't have your freedom. I'll put you in the dungeon for the rest of your life, commanded the king. And the king was about to call the soldiers when Manka's father fell on the throne room floor, pulling his hair and crying, Oh, I should have listened to Manka. She told me not to come without, with, with the cup alone. The king heard what the farmer was saying, and he too had heard the stories about the clever lass, Manka. He said, now you mean to tell me your daughter is the one they call clever Manka? Yes, your highness, and she told me not to come with the cup alone. I should have listened to her. Very well then, if your daughter is the one they call clever Manka, I'll give you one chance to retain your freedom. I'll give you a riddle in three parts. If she can give you the answers to my riddle, you may go free. If not, in service to me, you will be for the rest of your life. <laughs> the three parts of the riddle are this. One, what is the sweetest thing in the world? Two, what is the swiftest thing in the world? And three, what is the most precious thing in the world? Be here before midday tomorrow, or I will have my soldiers come and find you, said the king. And the king ordered the farmer tossed out into the dusty road outside the castle. And so Manka's father went home with tears staining his, his dust-covered cheeks, and he stumbled into the house just about dinner time. Oh, Manka, I should have listened to you. I should have, I should have done what you told me to do. And now the king, he's, he's going he's gonna to make me his servant forever. Well, sit down and uh, wash up first, and then sit down and have your supper, said Manka in a knowing tone. Hmm. Well, he washed up and he sat down and had his supper and he told Manka what the king had said. Very well, father. Rest easy. Tomorrow morning after breakfast, I will tell you what to go and say to the king. And so her father went to sleep the next morning. Bright and early he had a breakfast and she told him what to say. Well, he wasn't sure just how it was going to go when he went to the king, but Manka was clever and if he didn't go, the soldiers would come and find him anyway. So just before midday, Manka's father went before the king. He walked into the throne room and the king was sitting on his throne. Well, I see you've come, <laughs> said the king. What answers has your daughter sent for me? Well, your highness, said the farmer, my daughter says the sweetest thing in the world is sleep. For what feels, what feels better after a hard day's labor than sleep? And, and the swiftest thing in the world is thought for what comes into our heads and then leaves more swiftly than a thought and is harder to get back again. And the most precious thing in the world is the very earth from which all good and precious things come. We get our water and our food from the, from the earth itself. Very well then, said the king. Hmm. You may have your freedom. Now tell your daughter this. Hmm. If she can answer another three-part riddle, and she so desires, she may rule beside me as king. She must come to me neither riding nor walking. She must come to me neither by day nor by night. And she must come to me neither dressed nor undressed. If she can do those three things and she wishes, she may be my queen. Now be gone. And so Manka's father was shown out of the castle. He went home and he told Manka what the king had said and she smiled and nodded her head and she thought of what the king had said. 
That evening after dinner and washing and cleaning up and doing her evening chores, she lay down in her bed and she had that same smile on her lips as she went to sleep. She did not sleep the whole night long, though. Before daybreak the next morning, she arose from her bed and unbuttoned and let her nightgown fall to the floor. Then dressed in only what she had been dressed in when she was born, she went to a box beside the door. She opened the box and from it she took a rope and a fishnet. She closed the box, she went outside and she went to the pen where the animals were kept. She awakened the goat and she had tied the rope around the neck of the goat. Then she wrapped the fishnet around herself, tied it over the collar at her shoulder, and she headed down the road, leading the goat by the rope. A little while later, as she made her way down the road that went just below the king's bedroom window on that side of the castle, she stopped and she waited. As she saw the sun beginning to crest the horizon, she scooped down and grabbed a handful of pebbles from the road, road and then she tossed them against the king's bedroom window. The clatter of the stones awakened the king. He came and opened the window and pushed back the shutters, and he looked around and said, Who dares awaken the king at this early hour? It is I, your highness, said Manka. I have come as you bade. And as she spoke, she laid one leg astride the goat's back. The king looked down. He could see it was Manka. Well, you've come, you say. And how is it you've answered my riddles? She said, Well, your highness, you said I must come neither by day nor by night. And if you will look to the east, you will see the sun is neither above nor below the horizon. You said I must come neither riding nor walking. And if you will look, you will see I have but one leg astride the goat's back. So I am neither walking nor riding the goat. And if you look even closer, you'll see what I am wearing this morning. I am neither dressed nor undressed. And as she spoke, the sunlight came down from high enough so it shone a beam directly on Manka standing there in the road. And from his point of purchase, the king looked down. He could see not only Manka was neither dressed nor undressed, not only was she quite clever, she was quite comely and attractive as well. Very well then, will you be my queen, said the king. And she said, yes, I will. Then come into the castle, he commanded. And so the servants let open the castle gates and the castle doors. Manka was let in. She was shown to the royal <clears throat> closets and she was dressed in fine clothes. They sent invitations out. They had a grand wedding, a fine ball, a wonderful dinner. And at the dinner, the king sat and he drank wine and he drank wine and he drank wine until it came time for, <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye, I have an announcement to make said the king as he took another <laughs> sip of his wine. And the king stood up at the end of his table and he said, I hereby proclaim Manka may serve beside me as queen, so long as she never interferes in my business as king. If she ever interferes in my business as king, <clears throat> she must go back to being a peasant farmer's daughter. Is it agreed? He turned to Manka and she raised her glass and they toasted agreement. And so Manka began to serve beside the king. It was a prosperous reign they had together, side by side, for a short while. For you know, every story has in it either one night or one day. And one day, a short while later, it was market day. And at market day, people came and they traded and exchanged whatever surpluses they had. At the market, there was a farmer with a gelding, and another farmer with a mare and foal. And the hubbub and noise of the, of the market, the foal lost its way and left its mother and stood by the gelding. The farmer to whom the foal belonged said, I must have my property back. The other farmer said, no, 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 the, uh, the young horse knows where it belongs. And so an argument ensued. People chose up sides. Give it to him, give it to him. They were calling back and forth and back and forth until the king happened by on his royal steed. Your Highness, will you please, will you please uh, resolve the dispute? They called, and the king from atop his horse looked down and said, Well, obviously, the foal knows its mother. And he awarded the foal to the farmer with gelding, not observing what was obvious to everyone standing around. And so the king rode away, having made the mistake, but no one would dare say, Your Highness, you failed to see what everyone else saw, and so you made the mistake. And soon word of the king's error spread far and wide and reached Manka's ears inside the castle. That evening after dinner, as she went for her stroll along the river that flowed near the castle, she happened upon the farmer to whom the foal belonged. Psst, psst, come here, farmer, she said. If you will tell no one who has told you what to say and do, I will give you a plan. And if you will follow that plan, you will have your property returned to you. Will you agree? And the farmer agreed. And so Maka gave him a plan. 
the plan went this way. The next morning, when the king went out with the first light astride his royal steed to go for a fine ride in the morning mist, there, just outside the castle gate, was the farmer to whom the foal belonged with a familiar-looking fish net. Tossing the net into the dusty road and pulling it too as though he expected to reap a great catch of fish, the king reined his horse in and said, Stupid farmer, don't you know it's impossible to catch fish in the dust of a road? The farmer bowed and said, Your Highness, tell me, is it any easier for a gelding to foal? Oh, the king realized his mistake of the day before. Very well, then. You shall have your property back. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm smart enough to know how to, uh, to correct a mistake I've made, but you have made a mistake, farmer. You are not wise enough to have devised this plan on your own. Tell me who told you what to say and do, or I shall be hard on you. And under such a threat, the farmer relented and broke his word, broke his promise to Manka. He told the king it was Manka who had given him the plan. I thought as much, said the king. And so the king abbreviated his morning ride, went back into the castle, tied up his horse, stomped into the royal bedroom, and tossed Manka out of the royal bed. You have broken your word. You have interfered in my business as king. Today will be your last day ruling as queen. We'll have one dinner together with all of our family and friends, and then you'll be gone. And so it was commanded. Invitations were sent. People came to the castle, but it was not a happy occasion. They were sad and somber, and no one smiled. There was no laughter. Few people ate anything at the meal. The king drank and drank, as was his way oftentimes, and he drank some more and drank some more until finally he stood up from his end of the table in the royal banquet hall and said, Hear ye, hear ye, I hereby proclaim, so no one can say I have been an unfair king, that when Manka leaves the castle tonight, she may take her with her the one thing one thing she values most. And with that, he sat down, drained his tankard of wine, and went fast asleep in the royal chair at the end of the table. Well, soon it was time for everyone to go, so Manka made her way to the door at the far end of the banquet hall, and one by one she hugged and bid farewell to all the people who had come to say goodbye, until finally only Manka and the king remained in the throne room. She closed the door and went to the far end of the throne room, pulled the king's chair back, and hoisted him up on her shoulder. And then, leaving from the door at that end of the throne room, she made her way down the halls to the back side of the castle, out into the castle fenced area where the animals were kept. She found a cart filled with straw, and gently she laid the king in the cart. She found the horse blanket and put it over the king. She hitched up a horse, climbed in the cart, and she drove the cart with herself and the king in it away from the castle as the moon rose. The next morning, when the sun crested the horizon and the first meadowlarks began to sing, the king awakened, oh, with something of a headache. And he looked around, expecting to see himself in the royal bedchambers, lying asleep on the silk-covered beds. But instead, he saw that he had been asleep on the straw-covered floor of a shepherd's hut in the, in the countryside. And lying next to him, resting on one elbow, with a very, very sure of herself smile on her lips, was Manka. The king huffed, what is the meaning of this? What am I doing here and not in the castle? Huh? What have you done? She shrugged and she smiled and she said, Your Highness, have I not but once again done as you said I must? For last night, didn't you say, when I left the castle, I was to take with me the one thing I value most? And so I have done just that. For the thing I value most is the love our hearts exchange. And I could not have that if I did not have you. So I have taken you with me as I've left the castle. Well, the king was again impressed by Manka's cleverness, and she was quite comely looking in the morning air, and so he reversed his decision and decided as long as the two lived, she would remain his wife, the queen, and they would rule side by side. They spent a quiet and private morning there in the shepherd's hut in the hills, and when they returned, she was restored to being the queen. And from then on, as long as the king and Manka lived, they ruled in peace, happiness, and prosperity. For you see, whenever the king had a really difficult decision to make, he was careful to consult his queen, the very clever Manka. And that's the story of Clever Manka. Thank you very much.